So as with everything in this first unit, we are thinking about how to define Latin America and how we should approach the study of Latin America as people who live in the United States. One of the issues that we have, besides trying to define Latin America as a coherent region, uh, which of course has a lot of diversity and difference within itself, we also have to think about what is the relationship between the United States and Western Europe and places in Latin America. This has largely been an issue of defining the wealthy world against the poor world or the less wealthy world. Um, so the title of this presentation is What is the Global South? So we're gonna think about uh, kind of global definitions as we begin our study of Latin America. So what do we mean by this term, Global South? Have any of you heard of that one before? And as I'm uh, narrating these presentations, I realize that when I do this class uh, in person, I ask a lot of questions. So I hope that you will uh, respond to some of these on Twitter when you do your uh, Twitter assignments and as well uh, when you do the, the discussion assignments, I should say, on Slack. As you can kind of see in this map, um, you know, there's this kind of squiggly line that's dividing the north and the south. Um, it's trying to take um, Australia into the north. You know, so again, we're not really talking about a geographic divide, even though we're using terms like global north and global south. As you can see from this UN development program source, the term south or global south refers to developing countries which are located primarily in the southern hemisphere, but not entirely in the southern hemisphere. And as has been noted at American University in their study, or excuse me, their center for the global south, um, 157 of the world's 184 recognized states are in the global south. Now we can kind of see from this map that states like the United States, Canada, um, Russia, and so on, take up a large chunk of our geography. Although we should also point out Africa is much bigger than it actually is projected on most global maps. So, um, you know, we're talking about places that um, actually comprise the majority of the world's population and of the world's people when we're talking about the global south. But usually we're thinking about it in terms of, well, how do they compare to places we think of as developed nations or wealthier nations? What other terms have been used to refer to the nations that we think of when we talk about the global south? Think about that for just a minute. So if you were trying to define, and here's another way of kind of shading the nations of the global south uh, with that red hatching, um, what other terms have been used for this? Uh, what ones can you think of? Of course, over here we have developed versus developing nations. This one's Global North, Global South, in these comics. Um, we've also used things like the third world, the first world, second world, third world, um, low to middle income countries. We have to think about what connotations these terms carry. You know, as we read about in the article in The Guardian, as well as thinking about the Lochte scandal from the 2016 Olympics, um, these terms carry weighty connotations of a global hierarchy in which people from the global north are not only wealthier, but better educated, um, have kind of a better approach um, to living, to technology, and all of these kinds of things, which may or may not be actually true uh, when you look at the people and places of nations that are characterized as the third world, or as developing, or as the global south. Um, so that's why we have to be careful about how we characterize these places. The third world itself, so this is one that still gets used even though it's um, pretty outdated at this point, was a construct of the Cold War. And so what we mean by that, we talk about the Cold War, we're talking about that conflict that um, was a war of um, nuclear proliferation, a war of threats, um, a war of arms races and a space race and all of these kinds of things between the United States and the Soviet Union, between World War II, the end of World War II, and the early 1990s with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, so this was really a contest between capitalism and communism as economic forces. Um, so the third world then 
Uh, let me back that up. The first world uh, was used to refer to the United States and its allies in Western Europe, those capitalist nations um, that called themselves the free world, the keepers of the free world, uh, the keepers of democracy, and, and so on. Whereas the Soviet bloc, um, those nations that were forcibly, for the most part, um, with a couple exceptions, allied to the Soviet Union, um, that was the second world. And then everything else was the third world. Um, of course, the Cold War turned hot in many places in Latin America. Um, we'll see that in Guatemala. A lot of the brutal dictatorships that rose in the 20th century were an outgrowth of Cold War politics and the actual fighting of the Cold War, even though it didn't take place between the United States and the Soviet Union directly. Um, but again, this, this notion of the third world, it's outdated, it can be problematic, um, and it, it doesn't necessarily match the realities of the world that we know now. So to further kind of layer another question, set of questions um, on the way that we look at the world, Take a moment and think about these photos. If you had to categorize them as either being part of the global north, the first world, or the global south, the third world, or a developing nation, where would you put them and why? So let me tell you, and you probably already guessed, it's a very leading kind of slide here, um, that the the, the places, the photos you would expect to be from the Global South um, are actually the Global North and vice versa. So for example, this one here is from um, a section of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. It's from the Flamenco neighborhood. This one over here is Santiago de Chile. So this looks like a bustling modern city, something you would see in the Global North. This here is a home in Thoreau, New Mexico. This is a photograph from Madrid, New Mexico. This says Youngstown, Ohio. So again, um, our notions of poverty, of culture, of the ways of life in both of these places, um, it doesn't always make sense to think in terms of global north and global south. But in terms of trying to categorize the world and how um, economic relations um, as well as political relations happen, um, the categories do help us in some senses. They do help us to think about, and hopefully they'll help us in this class, to think about our own biases and our own kind of um, ways of being condescending without even meaning to when we think about other places in the world. Sometimes it's easy for us, uh, even looking locally at uh, Pueblo peoples or Nuevo Mexicano peoples, it can be easy for us to think uh, in terms of, you know, well, their culture, is something that keeps them in the past, it keeps them impoverished. When the reality is no economic uh, constraints and structures as well as political structures keep them impoverished and create conditions of poverty, um, sometimes these categories can sort of take the responsibility out of the way we look at the world. Well, there's nothing we could really do about that. That's just the way it is there, they're happy that way. Um, I want us to disabuse ourselves of those ways of thinking as we approach Latin America this semester. Um, and maybe, you know, think of the world differently if we can. Uh, you know, so what are your thoughts about this map? What's different about this map than most maps you would see of the world? Of course, it's just upside down. You know, the world's just upside down. South is north and vice versa. Or I should just say south is at the top rather than north being at the top. Um, but how does turning things on their heads in terms of the way we conceptualize the world around us, how might that help us to get better insights about these places that many of us have visited, as we've noted, as we've introduced ourselves to each other on the discussion board, others have not. Um, you know, so again, think about, or at least try to think about things differently as we approach uh, our study of Latin America and the global South this semester. And as always, please let me know whenever you have questions. Um, I do have a resources slide on this one. Um, there are the, the, the sources that I look to um, as I created this slideshow and the ideas that I've presented you. Um, I will put the links, so act, actual active links to these either in the comments for this video um, or below this video in Blackboard. 